Next item, under the Department of Human Resources, the Healthier You Wellness Pilot Program. Good morning. morning. The Department of Human Resources is requesting one permanent position and $122,000 of reimbursement authority for fiscal year 2015-2016 and $113,000 ongoing to expand the Healthier You State Employee Workplace Wellness Pilot to additional work sites. We're currently at the East End Complex with the Department of Public Health and Department of Health Services. We're in our third year, and this is kind of the first. This proposal is moving away from it being just a pilot and moving toward more broader expansion statewide. Great. No issues? Okay, any questions from the committee? Okay, so we've been doing it three years, and, and what's the quantifiable result? So is, is this, we're, we're doing this so state workers are healthy, so we end up saving money on health care, or is this just a perk, or can you explain? For, I'm, just, I'm new to this committee, so. This is a collaboration between CalHR, SEIU Local 1000, the State Treasurer's Office, State Controller's Office, and CalPERS, when Kaiser Permanente has been a major supporter and we launched this pilot in 2012 um, based on an Urban Institute study that showed that in 2008, 22% of the state employee health expenditures through CalPERS were amenable to prevention and um, increasing um, through changes in diet and physical activity. So we partnered with um, with SEIU, and what we've had in the pilot, we've had consistently high participation um, from the beginning through what we're doing today. Um, it's really had an impact on creating a culture change in the at all organization levels from top to bottom, uh, values, health, and, and healthy behaviors. And um, what we found is that the approach we've developed partnering with labor um, is that we've had very high engagement over time and we've retained that. Compared to the similar um, pilots that Kaiser has done for other um, employers, our participation levels are significantly higher. And so we can reach, what we're seeing is we can reach a um, you know, a critical mass of the employee population in a way that has the potential to kind of move the needle, both on cost and on um, just people being healthier, they're happier, they're more productive, they're there. And, and so this, um, and we've been collecting data all along. We... Um, so if, if I can refine the question. Sure. Uh, well, add on to the question. Can you offer the data? I think that's what my colleague was right. looking at Right, I mean, at you're, as well. you're talking about the inputs, and that, yeah. far too often in government, we this is this is the input. We never look at that look at the output. So you, you've said high like three times. I don't know what high is. I don't know what the ultimate goals are. I'm not necessarily opposed to this, and I can see the merits of it. In mm -hmm. fact, I think we could benefit in the legislature. I know I've gained 17 pounds since I've come here. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we ought to expand it. But I, I'd like to know a little bit more about the outputs. Mr. Wilkie, you're now on record. <laughs> if you followed me on Facebook, you would already know that. Um, I'm trying to think of, I don't want to take too much of your, your time. We've, you know, we've done, we've run several interventions. We've also been collecting biometric data. We did health screenings in 2013 did them again last fall. So is there a quantifiable way that you can say, the, 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 for example, when, if I can remember the way you worded your comment, was um, certain factors in health care costs that are amenable to change mm -hmm. given behavioral changes. Right. 
have you been able to see a certain downward trend in those costs? And what can you attribute it to? Are there other factors, or are, are it based on some of the changes that you've implemented? It, it, takes, it, it takes a while to see the actual reduction in health expenditures. Two and a half years is not very long. Um, but what we are seeing in our screenings that kind of point in that direction is in, um, in 2013, 39% of those screened um, had a blood pressure of 120 over 80 or better, which is considered healthy. When we screened in 2014, 47% had blood pressure 120 <coughs> or 80 or better. Um, when we looked at um, cholesterol, the percentage of employees screened in 2013 that had borderline or high cholesterol, 36%. When we screened in 2014, 28%. So we are seeing the metrics that evidence suggests are directly attributable to driving chronic disease. Well, the first one the is right just because direction. the revenues were coming in, right? <laughs> Sorry. No, and we're, and, and we're doing this without any financial incentives. So does that help? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, is there any comments from the? Uh, LA? No, I, I think we generally agree. This is the type of thing that would that would have positive effects on uh, health expenditures, really over a very long term. Uh, but I mean, there is research out there that shows that these sorts of efforts can can do that. Uh, but it would be the sort of thing to watch watch over a longer period of time, I suspect. Great. Since we've, uh, we're joined by one of our colleagues, why don't we add to roll call? Cooper? Present. Allen. Mr. Cooper, do you have any questions? Just, just a comment. Please. I think it's a great program. I came from the city of Elk Grove, and we had an employee wellness program, and we paid about $85,000 and had a full-time person there for all city staff uh, for a wellness program. A lot of folks lost a considerable amount of weight and improve their blood pressure and diabetes. I was kind of shocked when I came here to the Capitol. And there are no facilities to work out at. Um, coming from local government in the county, we did have a lot of facilities for employees to work out at. Obviously, they signed waivers, but if employees are healthy and happy, they're going to be more productive in the workplace. And I just can't say enough. It was, it was kind of a hard sell at first to getting it in Elk Grove, but once it was adopted, um, we had a lot of folks involved in it. So it's critical, I think, also with health care costs rising. It's a perfect program. I support it. I think we should do more statewide for our employees to get them out there, and the investment is uh, very small considering what benefits you gain from it. So I support it wholeheartedly, you know, statewide. And it's, it's just it's really inexpensive, and a lot of folks don't belong to a gym. Just getting someone started, and we even had um, walking classes during lunchtime, their lunch breaks. They walked, talk, talked about um, healthy food choices, and it really had a significant impact on those folks, and, and some really got into it. Not everybody can afford a gym, so if you just give them, a, to me, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So uh, we should do more programs like this and hopefully drive down some, some health care costs. It's, it, to me, it's a no-brainer. Great. Any public comments on this? Mario Guerrero with SCIU Local 1000. Just want to echo that uh, we're fully supportive of this program. We've been a partner in this. Uh, we have seen very concrete um, health indicators uh, improved. We are happy to uh, share data, give you a presentation directly. Uh, Mr. Wilk, if you'd like to, we've done that with the LAO. We've done that um, with a number of departments to ensure that every, there's a clear understanding that this is really improving the health of uh, civil servants. Thank you. Thank you. And by the way, on the data comment, I think as you can tell, there's a willing, bipartisan willingness to support this effort. So the data would all the more, I think, uh, solidify that interest. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. The recommendation is to approve the May revision proposal. Is there a motion? Approved. Second. And I just have another question. So how many employees participate in the program so far? Um, the population at the East End Complex, the pilot population is about 4,000. So we've had varying levels of participation. Um, but I can. Well, I, I was late, so, so forgive me, but you've got yeah. folks out there, obviously, besides nutrition and health, they're 
<coughs> is there anything at lunchtime for the employees to do? Yes, what we've done, we've, we've run a number of interventions to drive physical activity and, and consumption of fresh fruits and vegetables. We use a, we a web platform where individuals and teams can record their progress. And so, for example, for the, the first intervention that we did that was physical activity, we got 31% of the um, East End Complex the, um, employees to participate. When we did our first health screenings, we got 48%. And using the, this is where the partnership with labor really comes in because they can motivate the employees to turn out and to buy in and to get engaged. Then we can use management to focus more on reaching down in the middle of the org chart to the managers and the supervisors and get their buy-in. And that is what's enabled the high levels of participation. Well, I think management's important also if, if someone's doing that out, doing those things, if they take a 20-minute break, that, that really shouldn't be a problem. So there's got to be a, some incentive for them. I think management is, is a huge buy-in to do some of those things. So that's great. And I just want to commend you on, on a tremendous program. Thank you. Thank you. Should we take a vote? There's a motion and a second. Desirian? Aye. Allen? Cooper? Aye. Mullen? Wilk? Aye. Thank you. Next, California Arts Council. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good morning. Please start when you're ready. Yes, uh, committee chair and committee members, Craig Watson, director of the California Arts Council. Um, for your consideration today, you have the uh, Governors may revise, which has recommended a $5 million permanent increase uh, to the agency. Um, and included in that would be the recommendations uh, like last year that would allow some funding for additional panel costs and overtime. Great. It's at the end of the presentation. It's all good news. <laughs> All right, any comments from the LAO? Helen Kirstein with the Legislative Analyst's Office. We don't have any specific concerns with the proposal. We note it's just a policy choice for the legislature regarding whether to spend general fund dollars on this program or other programs. Finance? Nothing. Comments from committee members? Great, any public comments? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members. Jason Schmelzer on behalf of California Arts Advocates. Obviously, uh, in support of this move uh, towards permanent funding by the governor and the May revise, uh, obviously, we want to see that funding level grow over the years, uh, but are in support of what's in front of you at this point. So thank you. Thank you. Um, and while it pains me to have to rescind an action we took earlier this year uh, in this subcommittee, of uh, 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 increasing the funding for the arts, at least through our body, our house, by 10 million. Um, given the governor's recommendation now and the permanency, the, the somewhat permanency to, uh, to the ongoing base budget of an increase, I think it's important for us to actually do go ahead and rescind the previous action, uh, then add uh, uh, a motion, which I'm happy for someone to entertain. Let me. Let me read the details so that we're, we're all in agreement. But thank you for the enthusiasm. That's wonderful. Um, increasing uh, uh, the, the arts funding by $4.95 million for local assistant grants and ongoing on an ongoing basis to $50,000 uh, um, uh, for ongoing costs. 
Oh, for panel costs. Thank you. That's right. And then uh, third, 140,000 for two permanent positions. And this is all on top of what currently is in place. Let's, uh, yeah, finance would, I'm sure, comment on that. That's a, that is a bit different than what's proposed in the in governor's May revise. But in previous conversations, uh, this issue of staff support has come up, and we've answered questions around that issue. Okay, please. Uh, Jeff Carasone, Department of Finance. So the May revised proposal is $5 million ongoing general fund, uh, 4.9 for local assistance grants, 50000 for overtime, 50000 for expert panel in order to administer the grants. Okay. Um, is the uh, Assembly's proposal today, you said $4.95 million in local assistance grants plus 50000 in expert panel plus about 190000 for two additional permanent positions? 140. Uh, 140. 140,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for, for the two permanent positions. Okay. So then we'd be at 5.14 million total in aggregate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I, I guess uh, the only discrepancy from my end was with yours was just the 50,000 uh, of overtime. I just included that in the 4.95 local assistant grants. So it's 4.9, 50,000. 50,000 and then 140,000 for the two employees. Yes? And but you named 50 twice just now, and I think you meant to name it just once. Well, no, if you, sorry to get technical, but if you mean 4.9 million for local assistance grants, plus 50 for expert panel, plus 50 for overtime, plus two positions. Yes, I was being quite literal about it, so. Okay. I think the two positions is part of the final. Yeah, well, uh, maybe easier just to say then, whatever the governor, to comporting with the governor's May revised recommendation with the addition of the two permanent positions at 140,000 total. As long as we stay within that $5 million total. It, it's in addition to the 5 million. Oh, it's in addition. Yes. So, okay, so it's 5.14 million total. Okay. Yes. Okay. Obviously, we're we're ready to support the May revised proposal at the five million dollar level. Anything above that, I'm not in a position to support at this time. Okay. Very good. Um, so motion. So for the motion to include then um, uh, comporting with the governor's May revision and uh, uh, adding one hundred and forty thousand dollars of two permanent positions um, to the Council Arts, uh, California Arts Council funding. There's a motion and a second. Are we still standing by it? Sure. Great. <clears throat> Nazarian? Aye. Wilk? Aye. Mullen? Cooper? Aye. Great. Thank you. Next item, State Controller's Office. While you're setting up, why don't we go ahead and do the vote only calendar? I believe there was uh, two items. Mr. Wolf? So let's take a vote on all the items with the exception of 10 and 13. Roll call. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Nazarian? Aye. Wilk? Aye. Mullen? Cooper? Aye. And then items 10 and 13 uh, uh, on the vote only uh, item, uh, if I can have a motion. So moved. Second. Nazarian? Aye. Wilk? Nay. Mullen, Cooper? Aye. Great. That's on call. Good morning, members. Good morning. 
and chairman and members, Jennifer Chavez, State Controller's Office. The first proposal before you today is titled Calader's Vendor Replacement Study. The SCO requests $492,000 in 1516 to support three one year limited term positions to study options for replacing the California Automated Travel Expense Reimbursement System, otherwise known as CalAders. The SCO's Personnel and Payroll Services Division operates and maintains CalAders as a service to state departments, accounting offices, and employees. CalAders is an automated system which allows employees to electronically submit travel reimbursement claims through the internet and for those claims to follow an automatic review, approval, and payment process. The SEO contracts with IBM, and IBM is a CalAders system administrator. IBM has announced that effective March 31st, 2016, it will discontinue support for our current system. While IBM may be willing to continue support, for calculators after March 31st, 2016, it will require using a new service support team at an annual increased cost. In addition, IBM has not committed to a length of time and level of maintenance they will support. The SEO requests resources to research and validate statewide travel expense and reimbursement rules and requirements and to evaluate alternative solutions for the statewide travel reimbursement system. We'd be glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Any uh, comments from LEO? Finance? Okay. Comments from my committee, committee members? Or yeah, I have a question. You say that 23 agencies aren't were granted exemptions. Are those large agencies or what portion of the uh, 130,000 users do they fit into? It's a mixture. Um, we actually have a chart that we can provide the committee that um, identifies all the agencies that were exempt. Um, I'm just curious, were they large agencies that were exempted? I don't know off the top of my head. I believe it's um, a little of both. Yes, some of them are large. Um, some of them are very small. I have a chart with some examples, if you would like. I was just trying to figure out what percentage of state employees they, they cover. Is it, you know, 30 or 40 percent is a large number or not a significant number? Um, I would think it was much smaller than that, but a couple of the large agencies um, that were exempted um, were Caltrans, which is large, um, General Services, which is large. The majority of the others are very small agencies and commissions. Okay. Since we're going to be holding this item open for now, uh, if you can furnish some of the data or information that you have to, our, to the committee members, I, I'd Certainly. be very appreciative. Thank It'd you. It'd be interesting to know because do we need to bring some of those agencies under and what were their, what was the rationale for it, them being excluded? And should everybody be under it? Because obviously it's much easier if you're under one system. Great. Uh, any public comments on this item? The recommendation is going to be to hold it open until Thursday. Um, so with that, let's go to uh, increased claims of unclaimed property to owners. The second item is a request by the Unclaimed Property Division of the State Controller's Office for four permanent positions and $581,000 in special funds starting in 1516 to enhance the SCO's online paperless e-claim process and increase the amount of unclaimed property returned to owners. The SCO administers the State of California's unclaimed property law. The mission of the unclaimed property program is to reunite lost and abandoned property with its rightful owner and to safeguard those properties from being used by holders as assets or income. Currently, there's over $7.6 billion in unclaimed property available to be claimed under provisions of the unclaimed property law, and the amount of unclaimed property held continues to grow each year. This past February, the Legislative Analyst Office released a report titled Unclaimed Property Rethinking the State's Lost and Found program. This report recommended an increased focus by the state on reunited un reuniting unclaimed property with owners and provided a variety of solutions to generate discussion on improving the rate of return of property to owners. The SEO has identified immediate areas from the LEO's recommendation that can be addressed promptly and effectively. The four positions will allow the SEO to raise the e-claim threshold from $1,000 to $3,000 and perform a manual review of 85,000 claims. This manual review is expected to increase the number of properties returned to owners by up to 63,000, estimated between $3 million and $5.2 million annually. 
In addition, the SEO will begin immediately by addressing three of the LAO's recommendations administratively and without requiring additional resources. These efforts will encourage more owners to search for and enable them to easier, more easily identify their property. We're going to do three things specifically, reduce the owner burden by lowering paper claim documentation requirements, enhance our online search tool by adding data search field capacity, and enhance outreach through partnering with legislators to get the word out to constituents. We'd be glad to answer any questions. Elio. Ryan Miller, Legislative Analyst Office. We have no concerns. Finance. No? Uh, I, I believe I have the answer for this, but I just want to make sure. Is the funding for the positions coming from general funds or no, right? It's special funds. Special funds. Okay. Okay. Um, the only interest I would have in this is if next year you can come back and offer a report on how uh, implementing this program has enhanced the reunification of individuals, Californians with their properties might be interested to know so how, how it's data. worked. Mr. Chairman, Oscar Chavez with Finance. I just want to clarify that the, the way this program works is that any, any funds that are not, are not needed to pay claims uh, are deposited into the general fund on a monthly basis, which means that any, anything that is spent on this program results in a, a decrease in general fund receipts. That's how okay. the program works. Okay. Okay. Any questions from uh, members or suggestions? Uh, any public comments? So this item is going to be held open until Thursday. And at that point, we'll uh, take action on it. Thank you. Last but not least, um, other post-employment benefits reporting. And by the way, on this item, I believe this item should have just been part of the vote-only calendar for today's hearing. Okay. So if you want to offer a very brief comment on it, sure. we'll move forward. Yes, the SEO annually reports on actuarial valuation of other post-employment benefits, or OPEB, and it's requested that that provision 7 of our item be amended to clarify the process related to accounting and reporting standards for OPEB. Okay. Any comments from LAO or finance? Comments from my colleagues? No? Is there a uh, motion to approve May revision proposal? So moved. Second. Nazarian. Aye. Cooper. Aye. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. On to the uh, treasurer's office.